You know, I once played Gary McCord at table tennis and he beat me with a spatula at table tennis. Not, you know, he didn't like bend me over and beat me or anything. <laughs> Okay, David, it's looking like the grill is hot. Yeah. What are we gonna throw on there? Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, Halle. I'm gonna show you how we would not do this in Ireland. All okay. right? Because in Ireland, we've got a New York strip, it looks like here. Um, I would burn this to an asteroid and serve it with a sprig of charcoal. We're gonna use a little Worcestershire sauce. Can you pronounce that for me one more time? Worcestershire sauce? Because I would have said Worcestershire. It makes no sense. It's Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Got Worcestershire. it. Worcestershire. Yeah. Growing up, let's say you go to school, you come home, your parents are saying, all right, David, get ready for dinner. What are you having? Well, we, we only had meat once or twice a week. That was the way it was. Some special seasoning here. Yeah, and it was usually like a ground beef and onions with mashed potatoes. Looks good. For luck. If you're using salt at all, you should always throw it over your left shoulder, and I suspect there might be some salt in here. So do you prefer Northern Irish food or American food? American food is is not really American food. It's just a conglomeration of, of world food. I like it over here. Yeah. <laughs> I like everything over here. You know, it took me, oh, how long? 37 years to escape, you know, and I'm, I'm happy here. Tomatoes. Make sure not to grab the handle of that. And potatoes last. So David, I understand you guys have a lot of potatoes in Northern Ireland. Uh, yes, we do. Um, uh, in fact, when I was shooting my episode on Rory McElroy, I got the whole crew to pull over and I jumped into a field in Cumber and I pulled a couple out and I had my mom make them. Now, wow. People, I mean, how do you boil a potato? You boil it with the skin on, don't peel a potato. Pour all the water out and you dry it, you move it around in the, in the pot a little bit until the skin cracks. Then you put it on a plate, you crush it with a fork, put some Irish butter on it, a little sprig of parsley, salt and pepper. Oh. Wow. Yeah. That sounds it's, amazing. It is. It's just the best. Who did most of the cooking for you growing up? My mom. She would have your dinner on the table at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., whether you were there or not. And my father, he worked at the docks in Belfast, and he'd be home at 5.45 every night, except on a Thursday evening. Occasionally, he'd stop at the club and have a few drinks with the lads. And I remember he came in about 7.30 one day. My mother is standing in the corner of the kitchen like Colin Montgomery, you know, like this. And uh, my father comes in, oh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, dear. Stopped at the club and had a few drinks with the boys. My mother says, mm-hmm. He says, yes, is my dinner, is it still warm? She said, yes, it's in the dog. And, and that was actually the moment where I realized, hey, wait a minute, my mom's funny. You're known as one of, if not the funniest person in golf. Did you know that you were a funny guy growing up? I, I knew I was because I was always getting in trouble in class. I was useless at everything. Would you say that you also got some of your sense of humor? You said your mom was funny. Mm -hmm. Was she a big inspiration for you? Yes, she was. Yeah, my father too. When we put him into an assisted care living facility for the first time, he didn't like it, so he broke out. <laughs> and then he couldn't remember why he broke out, so he broke back in. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, you can't write that. You can't, yeah. you can. <laughs> Growing up, I watched you on TV and you were sort of the or still are the gold standard of interviews in golf. And how do you how do you connect with people so well? You know, I, th I think I interview from a, a position of vulnerability, and that always makes people feel comfortable. You know, chances are if they've screwed up in their life, I've probably done it worse. So you're able I mean, to connect yes. on that and level. This is, you know, you can tell the way I'm plating this that uh, I'm not a professional chef. It looks pretty I mean, good to that me. Looks like that looks like a the road accident. Hey, it's good. It's, you know, it's right off the grill. It's fresh. Get over there. Get over there. What is, if you can pick one, the, the your most favorite interview of all time? The Tom Watson interview meant a great deal to me mm. personally. He's been such a great friend, a big brother to me. But there are people that left a mark on me, you know, like Bill Russell. And with all the social distress we find ourselves in, I said, you know, what should a kid that's turning pro at any sport, what do you think he should do? And uh, he said, be kind. It's <laughs> just those two simple words that, you know, if that's what you are, if you're kind to the next person that you see, what else can anybody ask for? David, I'm very impressed. Yeah? You did a great job. The I potatoes look amazing. So my father would have said, get on the other side of that. All right. All right. Oh, Moment you try it right here. So good. You know, if this whole... Mm interviewer, analyst thing doesn't work out, you may have a future. 
That was great, David. Thank you. Not bad. Yeah. Really good. Thank you. Thanks, Ali.